Thank you very much, Ali, for the kind invitation. Thank you, Eric. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to be here at this uh, great conference in Rome. And I'd like to take your attention a little bit further down the order, um, uh, away from the arch and more into the more distal uh, issues uh, that we have in chronic dissections. And uh, just to uh, show you some slides of studies that have looked at TVAR and chronic dissection, um, what these studies usually show is that about a third of patients that are treated with TVAR with stent grafting down to the true, true lumen uh, don't do well and they enlarge their false lumen and they rupture and they uh, usually die uh, of the rupture. The reason why the author, despite coverage of the proximal entry tears, fail to remodel um, is that the perfusion and the pressure keeps unchanged in the false lumen, sometimes maybe even higher. And the reason for that is that there are uh, intercostals or bronchial arteries that are, arise from the false lumen and that are fed by further distal entry tears, um, creating this upwards flow in the false lumen. Um, this is uh, the most interesting study about natural history of chronic type B and uh, type A dissection after repair. And again, it shows this one-third of patients that develop a false lumen aneurysm in the aorta. Most interestingly, this study also looked at the segment of the aorta where these false lumen aneurysms develop. And it shows that it's the uh, upper and mid part of the descending aorta, with this being a typical example. Um, this is work of uh, the um, moderator, Eric Rosselli, here, and he has uh, very early recognized uh, this problem after a uh, two-staged uh, repair for uh, DeBakey type 1 dissection, that this retrograde flow will create pressure and increase in diameter, and proposed an open technique of fenestrating uh, the uh, dissection membrane uh, in the first stage of the repair, I'd be very interested to hear what happened to the technique if you still use it, Eric, uh, later. So this is what uh, I understood uh, he's been doing in this subset of patients, is fenestrating the dissection membrane to allow a later second stage stent grafting seal to the adventitia and thereby sealing off the false lumen aneurysm here. Um, of course, there are endovascular ways to achieve that maybe uh, with, uh, with less trauma in the type B dissection. Um, and as you see here, even if you cover uh, with a TVAR down to the celiac artery, as we have seen in a number of examples this morning, you may not prevent this false lumen backflow as there are often entry tears further down, especially at the level of the renal artery. And what I'd like to show you is uh, some techniques of obstructing that backflow. Uh, either with uh, embolizing materials or a technique that we call a Knickerbocker technique. And most importantly, all these techniques do not restrict any further distal endovascular repair like fenestrated or branched endografting. This is the first um, uh, publication on that topic. And as you see here, in two cases of chronic dissection, the orders have used a uh, lo long list of uh, interesting materials like uh, vena cava filters, detachable loons, etc., to obstruct the false lumen, and they have been um, successful with it. They also use talent occluders. Um, we have done that for a number of years in cases as this one with a 7 centimeter false lumen aneurysm and retrograde flow, as you see on the lower image, using materials like coils and plugs and glue to obstruct the false lumen backflow. Uh, and if you, as you see in this uh, image here with uh, quite a good success in most cases. Again, the co-moderator here has published with his group a technique of using iliac occluding plugs in a number of uh, patients to obstruct that false lumen backflow with good success. Uh, but with a technical limitation that this occluder comes only up to a diameter of 24 millimeters. Mm -hmm. So uh, that made us ask yeah, the uh, co Cook Medical Company yes, to build us occluders that are larger than that, as in our experience, the false lumen can be uh, much larger than these 24 millimeters. And they have been building uh, this uh, plug that has a 50 millimeter diameter and a smaller diameter in the middle which then can, can be occluded with a zip occluder. And you see a typical example here uh, with the aneurysm uh, enlarging after TVAR, then extending down to the celiac artery and obstructing the false lumen with this combination of a candy plug 
and a Nilex zip occluder. And what is nice about these materials is that even though after uh, the repair initially the force lumen may look compressed and even without any ballooning you will see if you have excluded the force lumen successfully that the force the true lumen will enlarge and the candy plug will uh, take more this uh, semilunar shape and and get smaller um, so far in our institution we treated 18 patients with good success. Uh, there was one death in the follow-up of a patient where the initially used amplets of vascular plug was actually not sealing the mid part of the, of the plug. And um, these patients had, uh, had in the majority regression uh, of the aneurysm every, as we have published recently. And you see that uh, seven of 10 that we have more than six month follow up show, show rem remodeling of their aneurysm that have been previously growing. Um, what was very interesting for us to see is that other uh, companies and, and physicians also have been taken up that technique using other devices like this uh, candy plug uh, produced uh, by Bolton Medical. Uh, this is what our initial uh, design looked like. We just made a suture around a standard uh, thoracic stent graft and uh, inventive people have come up with other ways in achieving this with uh, uh, a Medtronic stent graft here and an iliac limb or with a gore uh, uh, extension that has been tied off, uh, allowing to plug the force lumen, as you see here. Another technique to seal off the force lumen is a little bit similar to what uh, Eric Roselli just shown us with um, balloon dilating uh, stent grafts in the true lumen. Uh, and we have uh, designed a special stent graft that has a mid bulges section um, that allows uh, for, uh, for this maneuver of um, uh, rupturing the dissection membrane with a large compliant balloon. Um, let's see. And this is, this is so that the stent graft gets this knickerbocker shape directing flow to the true lumen um, while the large section obstructs the false lumen and prevents the false lumen backflow. Uh, this technique has been uh, successful in, uh, in uh, most of the cases that we have done. One technical failure was that we had malrotation of the device. Um, what we have uh, learned is that today already in patients that we treat for uh, chronic uh, type A dissection after ascending repair, we include this kind of force lumen seal. As you can imagine, if you would just do the arch repair here, you're not going to seal off the large uh, mid-descending aneurysm. So as you see here, an example of an arch branch and knickerbocker, we already include this in the initial repair, or on this picture you see the combination of an arch branch and a candy plug to really exclude the large proximal descending aneurysm. With the rest of the patients that develop their aneurysm further down in the aorter, of course, there are ways of uh, occluding by using fenestrated and branch repair, as you see in this example here. Results have been uh, published in limited numbers of patients with quite a good success, but also with some significant mortality and morbidity. Uh, in our institution, the role of false lumen occ occlusion uh, in chronic type B and A dissection is uh, quite big. So for about 40 patients until 2015 with false lumen aneurysm, the majority was treated with false lumen occluding techniques. Um, only a minority of eight patients received primary fenestrated branch repair, and some of the patients required further secondary fenestrated branch either after this. This is an example, a patient with a, a 10 centimeter false lumen aneurysm in the mid-descending thoracic aorta. Um, first step here was a uh, frozen elephant trunk uh, repair with our uh, cardiovascular colleagues. Because of the size of the aneurysm, we decided in the waiting time for fenestrated and branch repair, we wanted to have seal in the false lumen. So uh, the, first, the second step after the frozen elephant trunk was extending to the celiac artery here, blocking of the false lumen to safely uh, create thrombosis in the false lumen, using this, um, uh, this step also for creating fenestrations at the levels uh, of, uh, of branch vessels that require extending from the true lumen through, through the false lumen into the target vessels and then um, finishing up with the fenestrated and branch repair. These embolization techniques, they also play a role 
further down in the iliac arteries, as you see here, quite often we land in dissected arteries in the common iliac, so then, of course, we need to close off the uh, false lumen in the common iliac as well. In uh, uh, rare cases, we have false lumen aneurysms in the common iliac alone. We have also techniques with true lumen stent grafting, and then uh, occluding the false lumen creates a safe seal uh, of the aneurysm. Further adjunctive techniques uh, are so-called spot stent grafting. This is made, uh, not, does not need to be combined with a T-VAR, also in patients with mild perfusion. Usually if we need to ensure perfusion, like here to the uh, right renal artery, what we usually do is place a nitinol stent to that target vessel and then try to seal off the false lumen part with a, with a coverage stent. This is an example where you can see with, that with this technique, a, a, a large false lumen aneurysm in the infrarenal aorta could be uh, treated. Uh, that brings me to fenestration techniques that are essential in treating chronic dissection. This just to show you that you can sometimes have a really a perfusion from the false lumen to one and true lumen to the other. Uh, lack. Uh, standard fenestration techniques can be with, uh, with stiff wire ends or with, with needles to create connections between these lumen. Um, it can be also helpful if you decide to deploy your stent graft in the false lumen, as in this case where the true lumen would have been too small to accept uh, over, um, um, overlay of two uh, standard thoracic stent grafts. So we fenestrate it here in the uh, section um, proximal to the celiac artery and we're able to deploy the stent graft in the false lumen to allow uh, a flow to the, uh, to the uh, abdominal aorta. So concluding, for chronic uh, type B dissection, tubular stent grafts are sufficient in a majority of cases, but false lumen backflow limit the treatment success. There's a number of techniques to occlude uh, that, false, that, that false lumen backflow and the early experience is promising. Thank you very much.